Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today's video is going to be focused on scouting and specifically showcasing a few huge scout replays. The things that scouts are capable of if you if you take some risks and also get a little bit of luck, and also when you spawn on probably the second best scout map in the game, such as Malinovka. These vehicles are capable of some great stuff. The problem with light tanks, or shall I say, when light tanks try to scout, is that they just don't really have too many opportunities in the game these days because the maps are more kind of like corridor rather than being, frankly, Prokhorovka, Malinovka, and Muravanka. Now, this bush that you see me in here is, is probably one of, if not the best bushes in World of Tanks. As you can see, if you can race into it early on, then you can manage to scout pretty much just the entirety of the enemy team. I think there are only about three vehicles that we didn't spot early on. And just take a look to see how the spotting is adding up right now. We're talking about thousands of spotting just a minute into this round. Now, this bush, it's quite adventurous to be able to get to, and I felt quite confident because I'm playing in the T100 LT, which is the best scout tank in the game. Now, it's it's not the best light tank in the game. I would say that the Bat Chantillon, even though it was a medium tank, was the best light tank in my opinion because it can still do about 80-90% of the scouting role that the T100 LT can do, but its combat capacity is just so much higher, it's, it's ludicrous. However, if you don't have like 42% camouflage like I have on my T100 LT when moving, then you might want to instead try and stop in this bush. This bush is a lot easier to be able to get into because your approach is covered. And this little gap that you have here between this bush and this bush is, is kind of sometimes the straw that breaks the camel's back and then you can get spotted and you can get lit up. Now one thing you might notice is that I'm, I'm kind of aiming up in the sky. It's not, I'm not worried that there's a plane that's going to come and take me out. It's that I was streaming at the time. When I'm streaming, lots of people like to watch and they would love to know which bush I'm in and so I press my M key, I hide the screen, um, so that even if they're watching my stream, they, they can't tell which bush I'm in. It's a little bit of an advantage. But while I'm just chilling here for a second, don't worry, I'm not going to be sitting in this bush the entire game. Let me focus on some crew skills that you can build up in your light tanks that will really help you. Well, firstly, camouflage. If you don't take concealment as your first skill, in all of your light tanks, frankly, you're doing it wrong. Uh, I'd say that many medium tanks want to take concealment as their first skill in, especially the lightly armoured ones. And then, of course, once you finish concealment, now the options start to come up. Obviously, for a commander, six cents. You need six cents to be able to tell you what is up when you're spotted. Uh, and that can give you a little bit of a, a heads up to be able to escape. But you shouldn't really rely on six cents. You should have an indication of whether you're going to get spotted or not. And one of the best ways that you can do that is to look at where the enemy are facing. If you are spotting a tank who doesn't know that you're spotted, take a look at where he's facing his turret. Because then if they suddenly just jerk their turret towards you, then you, you can tell that you're pretty much spotted before your sixth sense even goes off. And this is, a, this is a cool moment right now. This T95 over here is trying to make a break over the, the open field of Malinovka. And you know, well, that's a pretty bold play. But that bold play is about to go very, very wrong. The repair kit gets used once. 480 spotting against the T95. Doesn't look like the T95 is using a second repair kit. And another 800 spotting. And a 1,200 total. And bang. And look at this. In the first four minutes of this game, we're up to 8,600 spotting. Now at this stage, I figure out, well, I'm not really going to get any more from sitting in this bush. All of the, the key tanks on the enemy team are sitting on top of the hill. So why not just drive directly away from it? And I know that nobody's going to spot me unless they're literally sitting in these bushes here and try and make my way in along the south. Because if I can do that, I should be able to sneak up some more vision on the maybe the WTF Panzer IV, etc. Now 5100 in the open, and that's our first shot of the game. Just over four minutes into it, and we secure the kill on the enemy super unicorn, which is always nice. Always nice to take that guy out even though oh, of course I'm in a tier 10 vehicle and they're only in a tier 8 but they were trying to blind fire me in that bush I was getting rather nervous at times as you might have seen during this replay and just take a look how crazy the speed is on the T100 LT now, I always want to keep moving in this tank don't want to sit out in the open that's why I, I didn't stop to shoot at the Panther 2 again I'm gonna shoot on the move at the Samur I actually damage a critical get a critical hit there I'm not sure if I managed to track him I'm hoping for some tracking and now we're just gonna get into a position to annihilate this Panther 2 so other crew skills that are useful on your light tanks, off-road driving can be very useful because of course you're pretty much going everywhere in your lights and anything that you can add to be able to increase your track traverse 
if, especially if you're in a, a light tank that for some reason has poor track traverse, like an ELC um, even 90 or an ELC AMX, uh, for example, that, that's something that you can use. I also like the, the skill designated target on a gunner. Now, designated target works by if you point your reticle at an enemy vehicle and you can no longer spot them, then they actually stay lit up for your team for two seconds longer, which can be a, a massive advantage, especially against very skilled players who, who use the, the fact that they know that they're about to be no longer spotted to then make an adjustment in the direction that they were going. And sometimes people can bluff in going one way and then stop and then go back the other way. And those extra two seconds can really confuse people for those kind of moments. Other light tank crew skills, of course, situational awareness, recon, usually skills that you have to have on your commander. And that's what makes uh, light tanks just so incredibly important when it comes to crew skills. And I would thoroughly recommend investing, hopefully, one female crew member, at least on one of your top tier light tanks, especially something like a T100LT here. Now, I'll take my first round of the game from the IS-7. So I decide to turn directly towards him. And this is going to be quite a moment as we're about to grab the bull by the horn, so to say. You see my little jinx in my movement as I make my approach. Wiggling to the left and the right means the IS-7 bounces a shell off us. And we tracked him once. We tracked him twice. The WZ up on the hill actually tracks me for the second time, which is very, very, very frustrating. And so luckily for me, I managed to keep the IS-7's tracks off now. And take a look at this. I am running rings around this IS-7 backwards while shooting his tracks one by one by one. This is a very important skill to learn in World of Tanks for just absolutely just taking your game to the next level. It doesn't matter that this IS-7 has armor. If I can use my mobility to get around him, I'm just finish him off with a casual round to the back of the vehicle. Now, one thing that's very important to highlight here, and this is obviously for the, uh, for the advanced players out here, this won't be so useful for maybe for some of the newer players who are trying to figure out how the hell did he just do that wizardry? All right, let's think about this. So if you're if you're shooting an IS-7 from this angle with an, uh, a T100LT, if I shoot the tracks, I'll take the tracks off, but I'm never going to damage the tank. Why? Because it goes through the tracks and then it hits some well-angled armor behind it, right? Alternatively, if I advance my vehicle more around here and I shoot this part of the tracks, then it's going to go through the tracks and it's going to go and hit a non-angled plate behind it that will be able to penetrate. And it's the same from behind. If you're sitting here and you shoot here with the tracks, then you're just going to hit some angled surface and you're going to take the tracks off, but you're not going to deal damage. And sometimes it's not enough to just immobilize your opponents. You've also got to kill them as well. So if you wait till you shoot for when you're here, you're not only going to take the tracks off, but you're going to go into the hull as well. Double dose of gameplay today, and this time we're rolling out on Erlenberg. And Erlenberg, since 1.0, has been one of my, my favorite maps to play in my light tanks. There's so many open fields that the enemy have to cross. There's so many little bushes that you can make use of. Uh, there's also some undulations that you can hide your tank behind. This really is one of has become one of the best light tank maps in the game, along with Malinovka and Prokhorovka. Now I'm going to take my T100LT aggressively to spot any of the enemies that are trying to make their way down the west here. Now I get spotted myself, but I light up a Bat Chatillon and a WZ-132. And whoa, wham, bam, thank you, man. The Type 5 Heavy hits the Tier 10 Chinese light tank looks like they penetrate and roll high or maybe they got some assistance damage there and somebody else hit them as well and 1500 assistance right from the get-go but 1500 assistance is always nice but it's more of the fact that we've already taken out the tier 10 light tank or we've enabled our team to be able to take out the tier 10 light tank and so that means now i'm just so much more confident with my maneuvers because uh, the vision has just been completely hampered on the enemy team now, I'm not going to sit in that bush because I really don't feel like there's going to be too much of an advantage there. Sure, I'm going to be able to shoot some rounds at a Panzer 7, but it's unlikely that the very poor penetration that this vehicle has with 230 millimeters on its standard rounds and its premium rounds, still only 248, are going to be able to contest the Panzer 7. However, my vision allow 531 assistance damage to come in. And now I'm going to make a breach here along with the 705. Okay, Panzer 7 is fired. It is time to shine. Let's get forwards and try and track the Panzer 7. There we go, take our time, lock him down, allow the 705 to get the side, and the Type 5 Heavy finishes off the Tier 10 German Heavy Tank. Alright, so I get hit by a Tier 10 Artillery, and you'll notice that I point my gun directly towards where the shell came from. 
because it's very important to figure out and to remember where the artillery are. However, I get quite lucky here and I bounce around from an object 268, saving me 750 hit points, so I decide to back off. However, Bat Chatillon unloading on an IS-7 to my side, so I'm going to pop up over the ridge, put one round into the Bat Chat. Now, Mouse kindly pulls back. I, I kind of reversed into him as well, so we were both at fault there. However, we're going to poke up and our excellent aim time and good gun dispersion values allow us to finish off the Bat Chatillon. One thing I'd like to highlight on the T100LT is that its dispersion values are just so amazing at 0 0.6, 0 0.06 when moving, sorry, and 0 0.05 when turning the turret, that you do not really need to take vertical stabilizers on this vehicle. I would recommend to take coated optics, a gun rammer, and vents on this tank. And if you really want to, uh, to, to drop something, then probably drop the gun rammer, I'd say, to take the vert stabs instead. But I feel that... The gun rammer is still very useful in close quarters combat. Alright, so not the best start for this game, but not the worst. Now this is the part of the game where you have to figure out, how can I really get that much more vision? Now, it feels like the, the fighting, the battle lines have been drawn, and everybody's spotting for themselves. It doesn't really feel like I'm, I'm aiding my team too much by staying here and, and just spotting out. And so this is where you've got to try and think that you can use your mobility to be a support vehicle in the the one-on-ones that are happening all over the battlefield if you can try and find an engagement like this this 260 versus an is7 and turn it in the 260's favor you can just really make huge swings in in just the micromanagement uh, well the the, the the single engagements you can turn a, a duel into an unfair advantage for your team so 260 comes in the is7 decides to shoot the 260 mistake there probably should have focused me and then instantly i'm gonna lock down the is7 stopping the is7 from getting out of that scenario now the 260 just puts one into the side and i'm gonna be able to finish him off great not a single hit point lost against that is7 I press affirmative there, I was hoping that maybe the 260 would press affirmative back. I always like it, you know, just a quick affirmative, like a like a thumbs up or a nod, a bit of recognition there is always nice. I, I love that kind of candid teamwork in World of Tanks. Alright, with one IS-7 handled, I feel like I'm going to change another engagement, and I see that this Leopard might be struggling with this IS-7. We track the IS-7 on the way in with the excellent gun values, and take a look at this. Oh, i got to get out of trouble here. I don't want to take another hit from the IS-7. And I actually glide over the Leopard there. That was pretty ridiculous. And it looks like the IS-7 manages to damage the Leopard, or maybe just misses. And so this is where hopefully I can change the engagement again in the favor of the Leopard. The IS-7 turns towards me. Quick bit of evasive maneuver, and we get out of trouble and the IS-7 figures out I'm never getting that T-100 LT. Oh well, might as well shoot back towards the Leopard. And look at this! The IS-7 is tunnel visioning towards the Leopard and I decide to do a little bit of a dance. I I'm, I'm hope I'm entertaining the Leopard here or at least the people who are watching the stream at the, at the time. And here we go, Leopard press is affirmative. I'm gonna press affirmative as well as soon as I see it or am I tunnel visioning right now? Where is it? Oh there you go. A little bit of delayed reactions. I press affirmative. That was, that was a real fun one. So once again, a bit like the video that I featured the other day on the Stritzfang 103B, you can turn the engagements in the favor of your allies. And those are some of my favorite things to do in World of Tanks. We managed to take out two tier 10 heavy vehicles there without losing a single hit point, both from myself and also from my allies. All right, we get revenge on the T92 who took a round out of us, took about a, a third of our hit points away, but luckily that's the only damage we've taken this game. We hit the 100, looks like we do yellow damage to his tracks, unable to go through the hull. This time we take the tracks off, and this is where tracking is just so important. Yeah, 2,400 tracking there because I decided to shoot the tracks. And another one coming right up here. Leopard, terrible side armor. I've got 100 millimeter main armament which can overmatch. Not only do we take the tracks off the leopard, we also damage the hull. And another 1,100 tracking against the leopard. We are turning our good games into a fantastic game right now with 8 thousand assistance and 3,600 damage. We'll be able to get the kill on the T268 at the end of the game. Uh, not quite so. And the Jagdpanzer finishes him off. So there you go. Two gigantic light tank games and they were quite quick as well at six minutes apiece let's just take a quick look at the post game stats so first round on malinovka an ace tanker a scout medal how many of the enemy did we spot 14 out of 15 we literally let the team know exactly where they were all going we also get a patrol duty for enabling our allies to deal a huge amount of damage to targets that we were lighting up with 10 
thousand damage upon detecting and we we're able to take it to the is7 at the end of the game doing 2200 damage which would put us on third as well and luckily scouts get rewarded 56,000 credits profit at tier 10 is decent next up on erlenberg no battle hero medals here however it was still an ace tanker for 1399 base experience again we finished third on damage top on experience and how much assistance was this 8300 3600 damage Whoa, another 12k combined game and a very very decent profit at 67,000 credits. Now, don't get me wrong, not all of my T100 LT games are like this. These are the ideal scenarios. If light tanks could be that influential on all maps, then we wouldn't be seeing most of the tier 10 light tanks having like 48% win ratio on average. But hopefully these two rounds will give some food for thought for any budding scouts out there. And good luck to any of you chasing some monster games like these. For me, it's so satisfying to be playing in arguably the underdog and to be coming out on top. So that's it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about the state of light tanks in the game, and specifically light tanks that want to try and be pure scouts. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.